In some African societies, traditions have refused to give way to modernity. The Maasai are a nomadic community who move around several districts in central and northern Tanzania in search of pasture and water for their animals. In Kenya, their population is close to 400,000 people. The Maasai steadfastly still cling on their traditional values and customs, some of which may no longer be tenable. Despite interaction with other communities living next to them, the Maasai whose lives revolve around their cattle on which they depend on for meat, milk and blood have refused to let go of their cultural practices, an irony that makes them a very unique community indeed. The richness of the Maasai culture tags along many drawbacks. One serious setback is its inability to recognize gender equity and to give women their rightful place in the community. In particular, the girl child is not seen in any better light other than the income that she can bring to her parents through marriage once she's of age. In this connection, the Maasai have clung on the practice of female genital mutilation, FGM, the widespread criticism by Kenyan society and the international community notwithstanding. Some 70 kilometers from the Narok town and 250 kilometers from the Nairobi metropolis in the sprawling Masai Mara game reserve, two girls who are lucky to have escaped FGM go through the daily chores of any ordinary Maasai girl in the Manyata. Such roles include drawing water, washing, fetching firewood, and sweeping. In the Maasai land, schools experience a high dropout rate of young girls since their parents are keen to marry them off to older men either as second or third wives. In the Maasai way of life, being ready for marriage has always been more important for a young girl than staying in school. Jennifer and Damaris are stepsisters in a polygamous family of 18 siblings. Both are approaching 15 and had attended primary school up to standard 6 when they realized that a cultural norm that they had dreaded was about to come knocking. For the Maasai girl, FGM is the rule rather than the exception. <laughs> By now, Jennifer and Damaris could be going through the motions of getting into matrimony, save for the quick intervention of a brother who quickly shepherded the duo to also tour a girl's rescue home in Narok Town. The center, which has grown by leaps and bounds, started in 1999 with the aim of providing shelter to girls running away from FGM and early forced marriages. It operates under the support of full gospel churches of Kenya and combines Christian teaching, 
learning, shelter, and vocational training for the girls. Jennifer and Damaris are now proud members of the Happy Osotua fraternity. Girls who come to the center when they are well past school going age are armed with income generating skills which can be beneficial to their lives when they leave the center. Even more significantly, girls who find refuge at Osotua at a young age are guaranteed an opportunity to climb to the highest level of the school system. Millicent Millenot is a case in point. For me, right now I am 20 years old. I joined December 2002 when I was in class 7 and I went to primary school. I studied in Masconde. I completed my primary level 2003 and after that I joined a high school, St. Mary's Girls here in Narok. And last year I succeeded to complete my form 4 level and I did my final exam. I was taught about the FGM and the, the disadvantages of FGM and early marriage and I ran to my pastor and helped me, brought me to the center. For Amasai girls, uh, you, are, you are not allowed to stay without being circumcised. So I had to run away because myself I never went to grow FGM. Being educated and also I got safe, I wanted to pursue my, my studies so I had to run away. My, my dad is married to two wives and we are eating in our family and I think we are just two girls who are educated because my sister, she also passed through the center and right now she's in Nairobi doing medicine. After me completing my university level and getting my degree and also to pursue masters, I would like to help the Maasai girls, especially those who are in the remote areas. So for me, I would like to help them and to teach our community about the disadvantages of FGM and early marriage. The center, which so far houses 35 girls. With more girls reaching out for assistance, the center would appreciate additional donor support to meet the increasing demand. This is a worthy project which ought to touch the hearts of all. <laughs>